What's up? I'm your host, Michael, and today we're going to be looking into the story of a patented chlorophyll green that garnered quite the reputation, though not the kind of reputation you'd want if you were trying to sell a green paint. The effects of this green were so bad they fostered a superstition that still carries on to this day. I'll be telling you where this green came from, why it was made, and how it came to symbolize death. This is the story of Shields Green. The Great Enlightenment of the 18th century brought science to the forefront of industry, and with this came the replacement of artist pigments with cheaper lab-created hues. Carl Wilhelm Scheele, Swedish chemist, was one such creator on this front. Scheele was gifted in science, but always had issue with follow-through. Science was what he wanted to do, but debts and responsibilities never allowed him to pursue it full-time. No matter the toll his daily grind would take, Scheele always found time to experiment. He was the first to discover many things, including oxygen and chlorine, but Scheele's lack of follow-through almost always cost him the discovery credit, and subsequently a stable income. His first marketable creation, a yellow, which was known as Turner's Yellow, he neglected to patent. It was called Turner's Yellow because it was co-opted by a businessman named James Turner, who made a fortune selling it as Turner's Yellow. He had the capital to produce it, and so he was the quickest to market. Scheele continued to experiment in his spare time. By this point, he was getting older and more desperate. Fueled by the thought of other men profiting off of the things he discovered, Scheele was determined to keep creating. A year before the American Revolution, he created something the world had never seen before, a brand new green. This green was special too. Its yellowish tinge gave it a more naturalistic coloring than all the blue-green copper carbonate greens that had been, you know, bouncing around up till this point. Taking notes from Turner, he named it after himself, Shields Green. The color was affordable and available, and because of this, manufacturing began using it in all sorts of things, from wallpaper to birthday candles to clothing and even food dyes. Shields Green was everywhere, but the pigment had a dirty little secret. It was made with sodium carbonate, copper sulfate, and arsenious oxide. Now, if you don't know the problem here, let me tell you. It's the arsenious oxide. That's arsenic. The green had been made with arsenic. Shield discovered it accidentally while experimenting with arsenic and noticing its color decided it would be the next best paint. Now, not wanting to repeat mistakes, he patented it quickly and then began production. Everything seemed fine at first, but as the pigment vehicle deteriorated, it released arsenic particles and arsine gases into the air. The grim reality was Shields Green was a killer. Shields Green's deadly nature remained fairly silent until the death of 19-year-old Matilda Schur in 1861, more than 80 years after the public release of Shields Green. Matilda was what's known as a fluffer. Um, she dusted artificial leaves with green powder made from Shields Green, ingesting the poison with every breath. Needless to say, the exposure had a horrifying outcome. As Alison Matthews Davids writes in her book, Fashion Victims, the whites of her eyes had turned green, and she told the doctors that everything she looked at was green. She died with an expression of great anxiety. An autopsy confirmed that her fingernails had turned a pronounced green, and the arsenic had reached her stomach, liver, and lungs. In an article entitled, Pretty Poison Wreaths, written two weeks later. It was proved by medical testimony that she had been ill from the same causes four times within the last 18 months. Under such circumstances as these, death is evidently about as accidental as it is when resulting from a railway collision occasioned by arrangements known to be faulty. To the non-medical public, it seemed that Schur's death was entirely predictable and entirely preventable and her life had been cruelly sacrificed to wealthy women's desires for fashion adornments. So, 
If you watched the video on Undark, you probably already know what I'm about to tell you. Production was the main priority. Customers wanted green, and manufacturers were going to meet that demand, and they would sacrifice safety in the process. This is the supply and demand outcome that all systems built around capital rely upon. Matilda was sacrificed to the system, and with her death ruled as accidental instead of occupational, it appears as though the system was trying to cover it up. Matilda was one of the first cases, and she wouldn't be the last. An untold amount of human lives were affected by this pigment, and its decorative use continued. Industry, as usual, was focused on profits, so their efforts went into reducing the expenses of production. In fact, it would be only profit margins that ended the production of Shields Green when a cheaper, more durable green, Paris Green, was developed. And by the way, Paris Green sucks too. Beyond production, the dangers of Shields Green continue to threaten anyone with a penchant for the color green. Theory even has it that this particular shade of green may have been responsible for the death of Napoleon Bonaparte. While Napoleon's exact cause of death changes depending on who you ask, two facts remain consistent. Hair tests reveal that his body was saturated in arsenic, and ulcerative bleeding from stomach cancer weakened him substantially. Bonaparte's favorite color was reputedly green, and that's the color paint chosen for his walls when exiled to the island of Elba. If true, the mold, moss, and mildew created in this island climate would eat at the paint a little bit quicker than it would anywhere else, and that would exacerbate the release of arsenic into the air, speeding up his death. Whatever the case, this wake of people lost to just a color had an enormous effect on perception of the color green. This is when green really started to fall out of, you know, vote. In a 2005 documentary about Chanel, Madame Dominique states, Seamstresses don't like green. She follows up with, but I just don't think it's pretty. It isn't out of superstition. Tacitly acknowledging the superstition around green and fabric. It does not stop at fashion though, as the Scots aren't keen on artificial green either. A Glasgow University professor in 1954 went on a crazy rant stating fewer green sweets are sold in Scotland than any other country. It's clear that he himself must have wanted to eat more green candies, frustratingly stating, It is astonishing why the idea of green color in confections should suggest the stupid impression that arsenic is present. Now, Carl Shield did have moral qualms about the namesake green, which he uh, expressed in a 1777 letter to his colleagues, one year prior to mass production. In summary, he was worried about the pigment and felt that consumers should be aware of its toxic nature. Despite those worries, the pigment went into production with no such warning, bearing his name the entire time. Victoria Finlay gives reason to this decision in her book, Color, A Natural History. What's a little arsenic when you've got a great new color to sell? Indeed, from its initial creation to mass production and application, Shields Green is another story of capital taking precedence over public health. The arsenic family of greens, including Shields Green and Paris Green, were retired in the 1900s with the rise of health and safety regulations. They were replaced with cobalt green, first developed way back in 1780. Now, you could still find Shields Green out there, but it's under a generic name. Copper arsenite is used in all sorts of things like insecticide, fungicide, rodenticide, and wood preservative. There might even be some between your walls right now. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I've got a few others on some other deadly pigments. I got some other videos maybe coming up if I, you know, put in the work because you know I'm not been good at doing that. If you made it this far, give it a thumbs up because I need a like, and you're the one to give it to me. So thank you so much. Um, I want to thank the patrons on my Patreon, and I want to thank you for watching. Have a good day. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast on Shields Green.